the 15th International Conference of Globalics, the global research network for economics of learning, innovation, and competence building systems, is taking place for the first time in Europe. In October of 2017, it is conducted in Athens, the capital of Greece, due to substantial as well as symbolic reasons. This is a really, really a great pleasure and a great honor that Globelix is now for the first time in Europe and in Athens. And I believe we did with the cooperation with the Secretariat and the Scientific Board. I hope we did our best for the implementation a very productive and interesting conference. <laughs> I would say that a main objective of Globalix is democratization of knowledge. To talk about democratization of knowledge in the cradle of democracy, that is inspiring. Globalix conference in Athens has been a learning process of how to prepare an absolutely wonderful conference. These young people all around, it gives you hope in the middle of the world we are living in. And this is simply great. We are able to bring into Athens scholars from 64 countries. And in fact, all are thinking about Athens. And Athens is a very unique country for each and everyone here. Globalix, it's a joint project where everybody is equal. Huh? And we've been, through several ways, trying to do this in the last 15 years. Huh? And uh, we, uh, Within this, this perspective, uh, Globalix has traveled in different parts of the world, but now we are entering uh, in a new phase, getting into the heart of Europe with this conference in, in Athens, Greece, now in 2017. I believe this is great to have this conference in Athens, because once and for all we need to show that the future for Greece or any other European country should be based on innovation, deliver better solutions for citizens to live and to work. This should be our central concern. The Athens Conference, I think, plays a strategic role. And I have been extremely positive with the organizers and uh, with my friend Yanis Kalogiros and all his team, because in a sense, uh, it shows that uh, when we talk about uh, innovation, capability building, and in the same time development and growth, we should not make a cleavage between or a difference between some areas of the world and some other areas of the world. Greece is a wonderful place to meet, and um, I think the, the value added is continuity and continuing change. It continues to be globalic. I spot the continuity which I think is wonderful. At the same time, it's different. Each time it's different. It's, it's different. changing. It evolves. What is a global conference? A conference is a meeting place with important discussion of ideas and experience which are not long reflected neither in the academic discourse, the traditional one, at least nor in the usual policy practice. And also in forum to form new scientific networks. And as we are here in Athens, Greece, let's try to learn from our greater philosophers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a quote from Socrates that we all know. Smart people learn from everything and everyone. Average people from their experience. And stupid people already have all the answers. In the name of the Global Scientific Board, welcome to Global Athens mm -hmm. and may the wisdom of Athena be with us. is considered as an opportunity during this long and big crisis that we have experienced in Greece from 2008, which still is going, but we hope that we can go out of this crisis. And our belief is that we need innovation, we need capacity building in order to grow out of the crisis. 
In this regard, innovation and competence building in the context of industrial and institutional change can be of great importance when envisaging a strategy out of the crisis. It's really a pleasure for me to give the opening address on behalf of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering and the Institute of uh, Communication and Computer Systems uh, that helped a lot uh, contributing to uh, making the life of all the conference organizers very easy. Please let me once again to, to express to you how delighted and how honored I am to welcome the Globalix Conference here at the National Center for Scientific Research, Democritus. I wish you best success with your conference and uh, a very, very entertaining stay here in Greece. The current 15th Globalix International Conference is being hosted and organized by the National Technical University of Athens, more specifically, it is hosted mainly by the Laboratory of Industrial Energy Economics, which is a well-established unit internationally excelling in the European and national socio-economic policy under the direction of Professor Kaloyero. Of course, I shouldn't forget the Institute of Communication and Computer Science, an institution that supports top quality research, development activities, and scientific services to private and public bodies. Our university is celebrating this year the 180th anniversary. It's the oldest functioning technical university in Greece. It was established nearly the same time as the formation of the modern Greek state. The university itself has long been a field leader within Greece and has been recognized on many occasions internationally for its countless achievements and constantly high academic standards. Faculty in the university nine schools includes more than 500 members, along with about 4,000 researchers and almost 24,000 students. According to the QS World University Rankings in 2016, the UA is the leading academic institution in Greece and among the top 10 most active European universities and research institutes in the EU-funded framework programs. With this being said, I believe that this is an appropriate time for me to declare the official opening of the 15th Global East International Conference. And with this, I officially declare the conference open. <laughs>Τώρα με μια αίσθηση ικανοποίηση, μια αίσθηση ότι αυτοί οι κόποι που δώσαμε τα τελευταία δύο χρόνια έχουν βγάλει καρπού. Όταν το ξεκινήσαμε αυτό το εγχείρημα με του εθελοντέ, έκανα την ερώτηση σε αυτού πώ το αντιμετωπίζουν και πώ το βλέπουν αυτό το συνέδριο. 
Και μπορώ να πω ότι και για μένα και για του ίδιου, ότι το είδαμε και λίγο σαν μια ευκαιρία να αναδείξουμε του εαυτού μα, αλλά και τη χώρα μέσα από αυτό. Και γι' αυτό δείχνουμε και τον καλύτερο εαυτό που έχουμε, να αποδείξουμε σε όλου ότι επειδή μπορούμε και θέλουμε, το κάνουμε αυτό. It was a huge mobilization of people, of resources, of initiatives in order to have a very good result, both in terms of scientific quality and in terms of organization and of course also in terms of hosting very big numbers of researchers from across the universe. Αυτό που είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό και πάρα πολύ ελπιδοφόρο είναι ότι όχι απλώς γίνεται ένα μεγάλο συνέδριο και αυτό είναι σημαντικό φυσικά ένα μεγάλο συνέδριο αλλά γίνεται ένα μεγάλο συνέδριο τόσο καλά με τέτοια επιτυχία και από πλευράς ουσίας έχουμε μία σειρά από εξαιρετικές παρουσιάσεις και από πλευράς οργάνωσης και αν πρέπει να επιλέξω μία λέξη δίνει ελπίδα, ελπίδα. Κάπως μπορούμε να ελπίζουμε ότι τα πράγματα μπορούν και λίγο καλύτερα αύριο why we need new forms of global governance. And finally, I will talk a little about what are some main implications for the GlobalX research agenda. The 15th annual GlobalX conference focuses on the contribution of innovation and capability building in the context of financialization and uneven economic growth, with particular emphasis on the seeking of a new role for the state the productive sector, and the social actors. The aim of the organizing committee is twofold. The maximization of the conference's impact on the Greek context, and the maximization of its impact on the international scientific community of innovation studies. I think somebody would be making a terrible mistake if they thought that uh, those kinds of models directly provided guidance to policy. They don't. Paradox to catch up. That means, uh, paradox means that you cannot catch up if you just keep catching up. The first catch means close the gap between you and your target. Second catch means that you're imitating. If you keep imitating incumbent, you'll never catch up. You'll never take over incumbent. Market expansion is critical and has to be seen seriously by, by policymakers or by analysts. Uh, in, in view of the three traditional elements in economic theorizing, how they create feasible economies of scale, second, how they disperse external economies at a regional or global way, and thirdly, how they reinforce linkages in economic and productive dynamic effects. Exchange power by power, by new power forms, by new power constellations. This means you have to, to work to accumulate power, but uh, you should know, one should know that uh, power relations are not changing very rapidly, and you need a, a strategy and not impressionistic um, approaches and uh, fragmentary approaches. In fact, we think, we believe that technological capability accumulation co-evolve with both the technical economic affair and the socio-political affair, particularly in those countries where have problems in this socio-political affair. So our high technology industries are very connected to inequality. They are a major site for it. And they are connected to global inequality and not just uh, U.S. inequality. You've seen in many cases the phenomenon of what is called innovate here, exploit elsewhere. That means the innovation happens here is very successful, but due to the lack of instruments for funding and for uh, doing things, legal instruments, the exploitation happens in another country or in another with minimal benefits policies could hamper innovation instead of fostering innovation. This is why we start to use now what we call the innovation principle. What it is there to ensure that whatever the policy is developed and designed and developed, the impact on innovation is fully assessed. Energy production, distribution and consumption and electrification of the entire transport sector is no small thing. 
and it is part of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals as agreed to the UN. So this is a very important part of this process. We need a renewal in terms of the type of leadership, in terms of the mindset of the entrepreneurs and the business leaders. And the whole society needs a similar change. So I think it's not just an economic problem, it's not just a political problem, but there is a deep institutional problem that we have in Southern Europe, but is not that different in the remaining of Europe. We have to see what do we have in Greece. A, we have some well-educated uh, and trained new generations and older generations. They are technically very, very good, but they don't have a mindset how to, to transform what they know in technical terms to transform it in uh, uh, innovation, in application, in new venture, venture type. But when there is an environment and some mechanisms that enable them to do that, they do it very well. How can you describe the connection between technology and economy? Right from the beginnings of the, the modern economic disciplines, many economists have seen technical change as the key driving force. If you go back and look at the first pages of Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, he is working through an example of enormous productivity gains in pin making. And uh, the story is telling of pin making is a story that is driven by technological innovation and following the technological innovation and making it productive and, and useful, you had organizational innovation. Technical change is at the heart of the whole process of transformation that we are witnessing uh, all over the world. Huh? And you can make a very easy and good connection between countries that are more advanced and countries that are less advanced if you think on the ways the technical change is introduced in their economic process. Countries that are, have been more able to uh, introduce this uh, in a better way are much better positioned than countries that cannot do that. Well, the connection between technology and the economy is, uh, is quite interesting. However, it has to be seen, uh, first of all, in a dynamic perspective, and this is the tradition of Globalix. Technology evolves, the economy evolves, and the two entities interact and co-evolve. And uh, this uh, type of relationship is to be seen in a, in, a, in a dynamic perspective as well as in a systemic perspective, mm -hmm. because all the actors and, and, and parts of the technology and the economy uh, play the role of a system mm -hmm. in affecting this type of relationship. When we look at technology, if you look at energy, transportation, communication, healthcare, a wide variety of areas, uh, technology has the potential to give us higher quality products that can increase our standard of living. Now to do that, however, the, the, really the economics of this is that we need to get those produced at prices that we can afford, <laughs> that, that people can, uh, can, can buy those pr prices so that in fact you're getting higher quality and you're paying lower prices for those products. Now uh, to do that, in some way you're going to need economies of scale. You're gonna, the, the extent of the market is going to matter whether these technologies can actually be affordable. As Joel Mokir, the great historian of economics, said, since the re Industrial Revolution, technological change, for good and for bad, has become the main driver of e economic progress, of economic change. So, technology is the leading force in economic change. But that does not mean that it decides the direction. The direction of change 
supported by technology depends on social relations, that is, on social power. What is the contribution of innovation in the development process? So what I talked about at the Global Ethics Conference is how economists not only do not think in terms of innovative enterprise, in order to think just in terms of the market as doing everything, they reduce enterprises, business, to almost insignificance. Uh, this is known as perfect competition in small firms, and somehow this is, will lead to a more prosperous or efficient economy. It's actually, as I, I argued in my lecture here, it's nonsense. And most economists, I would say 99% of economists, or maybe 95%, uh, don't think about how business enterprise generates innovation that gives us higher standards of living. And as a result, they tend to look to the market, just some forces of just people demanding things and somehow will have higher standard of living to achieve this result. And it doesn't happen. People just demand things, but there's no productivity in the economy. Uh, that's not going to create productivity. You have to have the capabilities built up by these business enterprises. If you want to be part of the global economy, move to higher standard of living, you have to think about innovative enterprises. And Development studies has now reached 70 years old. So it's now dying, more or less. So to save it, a new field is emerging. It's called innovation and development. And the innovation theories that have been developed. So there is a new synthesis emerging. It's a whole new field. So the Globalix community now promoting these linkages between innovation and development. So we are in the process of doing it, and it's a very interesting project, intellectual project. Every new idea is called innovation. Could you please redefine the term? What is its real meaning? I think the Schumpeter provided the best uh, definition of an innovation. It is something new from a technological point of view, something new in terms of markets and consumers, or something new in terms of organization. So I am for a broad definition. However, the degree of novelty has to be present. We cannot call innovation everything that presents something of a different type uh, compared to uh, what uh, is existing. But it has uh, to have some substantial novelty in these three domains. Well, uh, innovation is a very trendy term and uh, everybody would like to present it uh, as a characteristic uh, of his or her efforts. But I think that uh, the important innovation is the innovation which lasts and also creates a new wave of further innovations. And uh, in my view, I think that uh, industrial innovation is uh, perhaps uh, the most effective uh, process because uh, this uh, leaves a legacy behind it, a positive legacy. And I think that this can inspire further improvements in the economy as well. So uh, I think that innovations, which some of them are thin air, it may be flashy, but uh, at the same time, they may not last for long. Technology innovation coming out of the research from the laboratories is very, very important. But when you are looking at the broader aspect of development, you may realize that some of the other innovations like marketing innovation, managerial innovation, organizational institu innovation, institutional innovation, these are equally important. You have to see it in a much broader perspective. That will include innovations that come from the research laboratories on the basis of R&D and other modes of innovation, which in Globalix language, we call it as doing, using, interacting. And that essentially involves learning at a wider level. A true meaning of innovation for me, it's the way I look at innovation is as a combination of uh, social and technical processes. Before, for uh, the longest of times, economists understood innovation as something very straightforward. Innovation existed only at the moment that a product reached the market or a production process was used. Before that, 
when you were developing, it was not innovation. It was technological advancement. Innovation is at the market. So now it seems that, that innovation is everything. It's, it's absolutely everything, whether or not has arrived in the market. So there is a little bit of a confusion in policy. It has become more difficult to disentangle that policy from other kinds of policies. Innovation is, a, in theory, I would call it a boundary object, which means that it's an object which stands on the crossing of different meanings. So everybody again ascribes it and gives it a different meaning. So I don't think we can ever define it in a way that we will all agree what does it mean. And that is its power. The technology is not only technology. It's one kind of technology and technology. The technology can be everywhere. In the way we think about it, in the way we work as a country, in the way we do things around us, in the way we try to find solutions to the solution of this conversation. Δηλαδή, το ότι εμείς καταφέραμε και οργανώσαμε αυτή την τεράστια ομάδα από εθελοντές, η οποία λειτουργήσε πάρα πολύ καλά, αυτό λοιπόν είναι μια καινοτομία. Το να κάνουμε και εμείς εδώ το Globelix ήταν μια καινοτομία για μας, δηλαδή ήταν μια υπηρεσία που στο εργαστήριο δεν την κάναμε ως τώρα, άρα στην πραγματικότητα είναι, είναι μια καινοτομία για μας. Εγώ σπουδάζω χημικός μηχανικός και επειδή η γιαγιά μου δεν καταλαβαίνει τι είναι χημικός μηχανικός και απλά λέει πολυτεχνείο συνήθως, όταν πέρασα της είπα ότι θα γίνω ένας μικρός εφευρέτης. Για μένα η κοινοτομία είναι κάτι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό που σημαίνει ότι μπορείς να έχεις μια ιδέα και να την εφαρμόσεις από το μηδέν μέχρι το τέλος βοηθώντας εσένα ή όλους τους άλλους τριγύρους σου. Η καινοτομία είναι σε όλα. Είναι στον τρόπο με τον οποίο κινούμαστε, στον τρόπο με τον οποίο ζούμε, στον τρόπο που χρησιμοποιούμε το ταξί, στον τρόπο που χρησιμοποιούμε τη συγκοινωνία, στον τρόπο που βλέπουμε τη δουλειά μέσα στη ζωή μας. Άρα από αυτή την άποψη η καινοτομία βεβαίως συναρτάται με την έρευνα, αλλά δεν συναρτάται γραμμικά, δεν σημαίνει ότι άμα κάνεις περισσότερη έρευνα θα έχεις περισσότερη καινοτομία. Η πραγματική αλλαγή θα γίνει αν ολόκληρη η ελληνική κοινωνία μπορέσει να προσανατολιστεί σε καινούριε μεθόδους δουλειάς, μεθόδους ακόμα και ζωής, αν μου επιτρέπετε. Ενώ η ζωή μας πρέπει να έχει ένα περιεχόμενο καινούριο. Με αυτή την έννοια η καινοτομία νομίζω ότι είναι, είναι το κλειδί για το αύριο. Physical stabilization or development. They seem to be allies, but finally they are competitive concepts. Development is the opposite what fiscal stabilization promises to us, because fiscal stabilization in the context that we are living now, in a sense, is being pressed by the financial system worldwide, European-wise, even country-wise, the increasing importance of finance capital and the role of banks. All activities that are important for the economy, but they are not important to generate income for the generating new products and process. The development is something that drives a lot of things, including eventually stabilization mm -hmm. at the end. But you cannot have stabilization without development. And any evolutionary Schumpeterian or innovation system uh, person knows how important is development uh, for an economy. And I think that we have been ruined too much uh, uh, with this idea of uh, stabilizing the economy without talking about uh, how to develop and foster growth in an economy. So I think that uh, one should balance these two needs. In Greece, we have seen too much fiscal stabilization with some success, I have to say. But at the same time, the long-term growth prospects have been trimmed down. So what I suggest is they look now better on how growth can be lifted. And in order to do that, we have to reduce the pace of fiscal stabilization. We need to find a better balance, which is uh, going to be more effective for the country. When you think about fiscal measures and uh, other measures that can seem to be intended for the good, but uh, can also be, if ill-combined, make a huge damage to society, it depends on how they are decided. What is the time frame for performing them? If you accelerated them, it's one thing. If you do it patiently, it can be another one. So the answer 
about this kind of stuff is, it depends how it is performed. Which countries are most concerned with innovation, developed or developing? I think today innovation is an issue of concern for both developed and developing countries because we are living in a context wherein the gap between the rich and the poor is widening not only within a country and across countries. So I think this is a major challenge for the innovation community to reflect in terms of the new modes of, new styles of innovation uh, to address the new century problems. I think all of them are concerned. Given the way the world is now, we have a crisis of nature, and we also have unemployment, we have poverty, we have inequality everywhere. Even in the United States, it's supposed to be the richest country in the world. There's a lot of poor people. We need to bring that innovative thinking to make changes to make ourselves change makers and game changers. We have to do that, and we're not doing it properly. I don't believe in the division between developed and developing countries. They are powerful countries and dependent countries. They are more or less the same, but it's not the same. Some years ago, I would have answered, evidently, the northern powerful countries are more concerned with technology and innovation than the southern or developing countries. Nowadays, the situation is not so evident. In Mariana Mazzucato's book, The Entrepreneurial State, clearly shows that the states in the most advanced countries has not been as concerned as it was with technological innovation lately, mainly because great firms have changed their emphasis from production to finance. I think everybody should be concerned at the same degree. Then it's a question of strategic choices, policies. The degree of real investment is not the same due to the real contingent situation. And there, I think, cooperation between partners in different countries is essential. If you have more cooperation, you have more activities, and then you lever up the needs. What is the particularity and the added value of Globelix in the field of academic knowledge? I've been involved in Globelix from the very beginning, and I think far more than any other person, it was Bentaki Lundvall who uh, set the orientation for Globelix and it is an orientation first with a distinctly intellectual point of view, an economic point of view that sees economies not as statical systems as in the, the standard textbooks and not as growing like some of the standard economic growth models, but rather to use Lindvall's own terms as learning, innovating, capability building systems. And uh, that is what uh, economic change and economic development is, is all about. The learning economy concept is based upon an understanding of all human beings as having the capacity to learn. Learning does not here only refer to expanding cognition and to developing new skills. The values and ideas that people adopt will reflect their experiences. The motivations that drive people will reflect the experiences as well as the expectations of others. This perspective gives ground for conditional optimism since it opens up for a major generalized change, not only in technology, but also in institutions, governance, and even in human motivations and behavior. Globalix is a wonderful thing. It has brought together people of different countries, people of different disciplines, and this is perhaps the most important issue to stress. It has been meeting point between academics from the north and academics from the south that share a common worry about inequality and underdevelopment.
So Globelix has, uh, right from the word go, been a forum for bringing people together. So it's a meeting point for different geographies and it's a meeting point for different intellectual traditions. So I think Globelix has contributed to the development of innovation systems thinking, bringing in a kind of development agenda to the intellectual field of innovation studies. That's its distinctiveness. It's a really wonderful place. Globelix as a kind of peculiar position in the academic sphere because first of all it has uh, some keywords uh, that are very important for understanding change, uh, development, economic growth and so on which are learning and capability building and innovation systems. That is one on the fact that there are some processes that leads uh, an economy or an industry to grow learning and capability building. So I think Globalix plays an enormous uh, strategic role in uh, not just in terms of existing academics, but also in terms of young people. Usually economies do not operate with the term capabilities, like uh, they're operating in the world where there are incentives and institutions. But there is no problem with capabilities. Capabilities are instant there. And we have this third dimension. So we are kind of, Globalix is bringing into focus much more this third dimension of economy which is forgotten but which is essential, which is influencing and incentives and institutions. The important point here is that Globelix has entered into a field where uh, there is room for other maybe interdisciplinary approaches, less strict in terms of modeling. So in this respect it has actually carved its own niche. And learning is at the core of any innovation. And today we are living in a world where knowledge is the most important resource and learning is the most important process. So this is the fundamental premise of global X community that believe in interactive learning and competence building at the level of institutions and organizations as fundamental to the process of achieving development, regardless of you are talking about a developing country or developed country. Learning needs opportunities to learn. Learning needs to face complex problems. So Globalix is a network where people learn together how to learn in each national place all over the world with the totally different kind of framework. And it is what Lundvall and Johnson said in 1994, if knowledge is the most powerful economic resource, then learning is the most important social process. This is Globalix, a place to learn, and it is a privilege to be part of it. Hello everybody. And now we are going to the Acropolis Museum. The conference participants took part in guided tours at the historic center of Athens, the New Acropolis Museum, the National Archaeological Museum of Athens, and the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center. Ένα από τα θέματα με τα οποία ασχολήθηκα με ιδιαίτερο ενθουσιασμό ήταν η οργάνωση των επισκέψεων σε χώρου πολιτιστικού και ιστορικού ενδιαφέροντο τη Αθήνα. Οι επισκέψει αυτέ συμμετείχαν σε μια δραία πολύ διαφορετικέ χώρε και κουλτούρε, πολλοί από του οποίου δεν είχαν ξαναέρθει ποτέ στην Αθήνα και είναι αμφίβολο αν θα ξαναέρθουν. Ε, μπορώ να πω ότι η μέρα εκείνη ήταν από τι πιο γεμάτε τη ζωή μου. Globalix Startup Event an open event at the Library of Democritus for the Innovative Entrepreneurship in Greece. 
Startup companies, new entrepreneurs, senior executives of international organizations that support business ventures, members of the academic community, as well as representatives from startup funders participated in the event. Και μας έδωσε την ευκαιρία εμείς να μείνουμε στο χάρτη των ερευνητικών ιδρυμάτων που ασχολούνται με αυτά τα θέματα, αλλά ταυτόχρονα να περάσουμε ορισμένα μηνύματα τα οποία προκύπτουν και από την ερευνητική μας δουλειά και τα οποία κατά τη γνώμη μας είναι χρήσιμα αυτή τη στιγμή στη χώρα και για το δημόσιο διάλογο, αλλά κυρίως για την πρακτική είτε των επιχειρήσεων, είτε των πανεπιστημίων, των ερευνητικών κέντρων, είτε των άλλων θεσμών του κράτους ή και άλλων μη κυβερνητικών θεσμών. Η ερευνητική μα ομάδα στο Πολυτεχνείο, το Εργαστήριο Βιομηχανική και Ενεργειακή Οικονομία, ασχολείται με τα θέματα των οικονομικών τη τεχνολογία και τη καινοτομία και τι κοινωνικο-οικονομικέ επιπτώσει αυτών. Πάρα πολλά χρόνια, 25-30 χρόνια, με πλούσια ερευνητική δραστηριότητα, με ευρωπαϊκά έργα, με εθνικά έργα. Είναι εξαιρετικά τιμητικό για εμά το ότι αναλάβαμε αυτή τη διοργάνωση αυτού του συνεδρίου. Ο κ. Καλογύρου μου ανέθεσε την ομάδα των εθελοντών για να μπορέσει να γίνει η διεξαγωγή του συνεδρίου. Προσπάθησα να σκεφτώ σαν φοιτητή. Έφτιαξε μια κλειστή ομάδα από κάποιου εθελοντικού οργανισμού που δραστηριοποιούνται σε αυτά, όπω είναι το Κέμεκον. Αυτή η ομάδα των 10 ατόμων που είχα στην αρχή ήταν και αυτοί που με βοήθησαν από την αρχή μέχρι το τέλο και να γίνουν αυτό που είναι σήμερα και τους μπορούν και βοηθάνε όλους τους συνέδρους με αυτή τη μεγάλη θέληση. Αυτό που έκανε το συνέδριο τόσο επιτυχημένο θεωρώ ότι ήταν η δουλειά όλων των εθελοντών και το πραγματικά πόσο καλά δουλέψαμε. Και ένα μεγάλο ευχαριστώ να πούμε και στον Πέτρο το Δήμα και στον Γιώργο το Σιώκο που μας συντονίσανε τόσο καλά και κάνανε μια πραγματικά δύσκολη δουλειά να φαίνεται υπέροχη και να, να θέλουμε να ξυπνήσουμε κάθε μέρα 6 ώρα για να έρθουμε στο Δημόκρατο. Εγώ νιώθω σαν να πήγα διακοπέ. Νιώθω πιο πλούσιο από αυτό το συνέδριο. Η συναναστροφή με ανθρώπου από διαφορετικέ κουλτούρε, από πολύ μακρινέ χώρε, είναι κάτι το οποίο σε γεμίζει, είναι κάτι το οποίο σε ανανεώνει. Σίγουρα, όταν του βλέπει ευχαριστημένου από την φιλοξενία που του παρήχε, αυτό σίγουρα σε ανεβάζει και νιώθει ότι τα κατάφερε τελικά. Είναι η πρώτη φορά που είμαι σε συστηματικό εθελοντισμό και θα έλεγα ότι νιώθουμε εμείς οι θελοντές σαν να είμαστε οικοδεσπότες των ανθρώπων. Θέλουμε να τους εξυπηρετήσουμε όσο πιο καλά γίνεται για να πραγματοποιηθεί όσο πιο μαλά και σωστά το συνέδριο. Και καθώς το αντικείμενο του Globelix αφορά την κοινοτομία και την παγκόσμια οικονομία, κάτι με το οποίο ασχολήθηκα πάρα πολύ στα τελευταία χρόνια στη σχολή μου. Και ήθελα να το δω από κοντά και να, να μάθω περισσότερα γι' αυτό. Δίνει μια πολύ αισιοδοξη σκοπιά όλο αυτό το συνέδριο, νομίζω γενικά. Έχει να κάνει με την εξίσωση της ανισότητας στην ανάπτυξη μεταξύ μερικών χωρών. Τουλάχιστον εμένα αυτό με παρακίνησε, οπότε νομίζω αυτό παρακίνησε και τους υπόλοιπους ίσως. Είναι μια μοναδική εμπειρία. Έμαθα πάρα πολλά από αυτή τη διαδικασία και πιστεύω ότι άξιζε όλη η διαδρομή που κάναμε. Αυτά που εισέπραξα πραγματικά με κάνουν και νιώθω πάρα πολύ χαρούμενη και, είπα, και, και λέω πούμε, ότι εντάξει ε, χαλάλει όλη η προσπάθεια, ο κόπος, δεν έχουμε κάνει διακοπές, δουλεύουμε ασταμάτητα δεν ξέρω κι εγώ πόσους μήνες, αλλά όλοι δουλεύαμε νομίζω με τον ίδιο στόχο, να πετύχουμε το καλύτερο δυνατό. The gala dinner of the conference at the Akali Club was supported by the John Latsis Public Benefit Foundation. The mayor of Athens, Yorgos Kaminis, gives a welcome speech according to the tradition of the Globelix Network Conferences. The first basic concern of a city should be to develop digital skills for the population. No one should be left behind in this. The digital age is a continual challenge and no digital modification, no plan for a smart city could succeed if the residents as citizens and not as simple users are not included in this. The event also includes the projection of an imaginative Asterix comic type film 
that was designed by Cristina Pulido and a team of volunteers. I democratically announce that we will host, here in Athens, the 15th Globalix Conference. The delegates arrive with order and organization at the conference track and they present original papers. My paper is why the men here is an innovation. This was followed by the Best Papers Awards, the birthday wishes for José Cassiolato and J.K. Joseph, as well as the traditional revelry. Athens. <laughs> this beautiful conference, so well organized. So, Globelix uh, 2017 will be in my heart as a real important conference and projecting new projects. So, it's an incubator of projects and uh, enjoy the atmosphere. Something like friendly and at the same time uh, hard working. Excellent. The Athens Conference has been a tremendous event. It's been really important, I think, in terms of uh, Globelic's history and, and evolution. There's been a much more direct concern with politics, policy, and the political economy of innovation change and innovation dynamics, and that's been a fantastic thing, I think. Really, just want to congratulate the team that has organized this conference because it's been a, it's been a tremendous conference. I think we will understand that uh, Globalix uh, Athens took place at the change where there is some kind of paradigmatic shift taking place from one global political period to another. And on many issues which we have raised on this conference, um, they are of that nature. Somebody says, oh, I see much more political economy kind of perspective. I think this is what will be for me the main feature of this Globalix. The most important thing was all the young people I talked to from around the world uh, who are looking to do a more relevant economics, and that is they want their economics uh, or their understanding of the economy to be rooted in understanding innovation and its impact on development, on people's standards of living. Not necessarily all coming from economics because Economics is too important to just be left to the economists. Uh, so it's interdisciplinary, which is very good. I believe that with Globalix, we can push for a new agenda, sustainable development goals for everybody, uh, better jobs, better quality of life, fighting climate change. For all these, we do need innovation at the heart of public policies. We are com coming to a rich country when it is in deep economic trouble. And Globalix community is truly committed to help providing some kind of insight. And this Globalix conference, the organizers have worked out a number of sessions which are directly trying to address the current economic situation in countries like Greece. Life is a learning process in a sense. So if someone says that uh, he finished learning, it probably it better die because we keep learning the more I live, the more I learn. I learn from young people, from old people, from everybody. And uh, that's the most important thing that I think we are achieving in, in Globalix. And we try every time to increase the, the number of people and institutions that we can, we can connect. The analysis of the organs of Globalix is the first time in Europe and the first time in Greece. Από το Εργαστήριο Βιομηχανική και Ενεργειακή Οικονομία του Πολυτεχνείου ήταν μια πολύ μεγάλη ευκαιρία και για εμά του ίδιου, αλλά και ευρύτερα για τον χώρο αυτόν τον επιστημονικό και το ίδρυμα που εκπροσωπούμε, ότι έχουμε μια δυνατότητα να πετύχουμε αναλαμβάνοντα τέτοιε πρωτοβουλίε. Let me finish by extending my warmest greetings to all participants in the conference. And a special greeting and thanks 
to José Casiolato and his colleagues who have served as Secretariat for Global X in uh, connection with preparing the conference. And a special greeting also to Yanis and his colleagues in Athens who did the hard work to prepare the conference. Never was the need for Global X more urgent than now. Global X stands in contrast both to those elites who preach the sermon of a kind of globalization that increases inequality between people and between countries. And it stands also in contrast with nationalists' ideas who preach ethnic cleavages and intolerance. What we need is to build national innovation systems that combine building strong domestic capabilities with openness. But we also need new roles of the game where the strong share knowledge and technologies with the less strong. Within Global X, mutual respect and recognition across diversity is the key to a successful future. I wish you all a very successful conference and let me end with my standard phrase, please work hard and have fun.